Good evening, brethren. Happy Sabbath. Are we ready to venture in the city? Are we ready? All right, this week the young people was preparing us, okay? And tonight is our last night, so let us stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We praise you for your goodness is running after us. Father, you have been good to us throughout the week. You have kept us in our sound mind and brought us here to your sanctuary. Help us as we praise you tonight that anything, anything that is within us that will end our prayers from being heard tonight and our praises from being going up, we ask you to remove it. Cleanse us and give us a blessing tonight, we pray. Through Jesus' holy name. Now we love our young people in song service. Happy Sabbath. Our first song, first hymn, hymn 183, I will sing of Jesus' love. Resting on his word, 
381.
may be seated. Hi everyone, good night. Welcome to a, another night of our Youth Week of Prayer. I want to welcome each and every one of you guys for coming out and supporting the youths. Yay. Um, question. Who remember the topic for Sunday nights? <coughs> Sunday nights Youth Week of Prayer. I'm sorry? Monday night? Who remember the topic for that night? <laughs> okay. How about Tuesday night? Okay. <laughs> and Wednesday night? How about last night? Okay, awesome. So tonight, so tonight, the topic we're focusing on is facing fear. We are talking about facing fear tonight, and I'm pretty sure that each of us um, face fear. So I'm going to ask that you guys remain standing for our scripture reading. May you stand for scripture reading, please? I'm reading in the Bible. Hello, children's, children's Bible. Faith. Faith means being sure of things we hope for, and faith means knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. Good night, everyone. The task has been given to me to introduce tonight's speakers. Both good friends of mine, both age 15, both not better than me at basketball, both shorter than me, and both are rooted to the church. Though they differ in, de in departments, they both are young God-fearing men. And before Nathan and Delvin come to speak, we'll have a special song.
Good night, church. Today's topic will be on facing fear in your city. When Franklin D. Roosevelt became president of the United States, please stand for the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for waking us up this morning and letting us be able to gather today to hear this sermon. I pray that I will be able to preach this sermon to these people, that, dear Lord, that they will be able to understand what I am speaking, dear Lord. And I pray that they will also apply to their life and that will impact them in some way. In your name and pray. Amen. When Franklin D. Roosevelt became president of the United States on March 4th, 1933, the country was in turmoil due to the crisis, and it needed a dose of hope after over three years of decline. On that day, Roosevelt delivered a speech that is still talked about and mentioned in books and articles. For a phrase that resonates deeply, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. With those words, Roosevelt made it clear that the number one enemy, enemy was not the unstable economy, but fear itself. Fear, as Cuban psychologist Mira Y. Lopez put it, it is a monster that sends shivers down your spine. Fear steals your thoughts and hijacks your dreams and willpower. It makes you forget what you know and lose sight of who you are. It makes you feel out of control and that you can never regain it. It makes you distrust the very people you should trust without hesitation. It makes you demanding, then humble and serving. It makes you think that God is insignificant in the face of your problems and challenges. It makes you search in people for what you can only find in Jesus Christ. It also makes you believe that any attempts to search for help will be futile or in vain. Fear in cities is a complex phenomenon that affects both young and old people and can be several related to several contributing factors, such as crimes and urban violence. The perception of insecurity due to crime and violence in cities is one of the primary factors contributing to fear. Crimes such as robberies, assaults, and homicides can generate fear in the population, especially in areas with high crime rates. Transportation problems. Insecurity in public, public transportation such as robberies or sexual harassment on trains or buses can increase fear in cities. This can limit people's mobility and affect their quality of life, in other words, making them depressed. Social and media pressure. The constant fear of news about violence, violent incidents and crimes in the media and on social networks can increase your fear in society. Overexposure to scary stories can contribute to a distorted perception, can lead to a, a distorted perception of safety in the city. For example, being informed about dangers, dangerous activities happening to others will make you skeptical about your, your safety in your surroundings. Distrust in institutions. Lack of trust in government institutions responsible for maintaining security in public order can lead to increased fear. The perception of corruption or, in, or inefficiency can undermine the sense of security in the city. So if religious, educational, or governmental um, environments are included in unlawful activities or any wrongdoings will not be able to be trusted by their people. Faced with, the, faced with the wave of fear that exists in cities, what can we do? Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that as I am up here preaching this sermon, that you may please bless the words that come out of my mouth so that these people may be able to understand. Help me to say things in a way that everyone can relate to and just protect us all. In your name I pray, amen. amen. Over, overcoming fear with faith. 
Although the Bible is not a psychology manual or a or it ties on the brain, it delves deeply into the subject of fear. In fact, the phrase, do not be afraid, appears about 365 times in the scripture, making it the most repeated message throughout the Bible. Furthermore, the words fear and terror are mentioned over 200 times, while dread appears over 100 times. It might be surprising that a book recounting the deeds of historical figures talks about fear a lot, but the Bible records that more than 200 of its characters experience it. So, is there a solution to something as overwhelming as fear? Can we overcome our fears? Is it possible to live without fear? Many have sought answers through psychologists and therapies, trying to change their thinking and behavior logically. Others have turned to medication, viewing fear as a kind of illness. However, over time, they discover that while these therapies and medications can help, they are not the only options. If we cannot eliminate or ignore our fears, can we manage them in some way? The answer is a resounding yes. According to the Bible, we can face and overcome fear through faith. Yes, dear young person, faith is divine is the divine antidote to eliminate all of our fears. But what is faith? The Bible defines faith in this way. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. In other words, faith is trusting in God, the Bible tells us later. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. It is important to note that not just any kind of faith overcomes fear. The faith that truly conquers fear first accepts the existence of God. Believing in God is the first step toward living a victorious life. Those who believe in God have a compass that guides them through the difficulties of this world. On the other hand, for those who do not believe in God, this world can seem strange, confusing, and discouraging. Life becomes complicated and directionless. Secondly, the faith that overcomes fear not only accepts the existence of God, but also seeks to develop special relationship with him. It is not only to know that God exists, it is necessary to come to know him. God himself urges us in his world not to boast of our wisdom, power, or wealth, but boast of knowing him and understanding that he acts on earth with love, justice, and righteousness. Before continuing, it is important to note that when we talk about knowing God, we don't mean comprehending him fully. As human beings, we cannot fully grasp an infinite being due to our mental limitations, mortal problems, or limitations. In divine, in divine revelation. However, when we speak of knowing God, we refer to establishing our relationship with him in such a way that he is affects who we are. Amen. Amen. Third and finally, the faith that overcomes fear is one that leads us to trust God completely. Someone who said that faith involves trusting that God will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. The essence of true faith involves taking God's word and trusting that he will fulfill his promises. When we trust in God, our perspective on life completely changes. Trusting God transforms everything. It frees us from our negative effects from the past and from negative emotions. By trusting that everything in his hands or our creator, we live without fear, knowing that nothing happens without his consent. Harriet Tubman was an incredible woman who lived in a time when slavery was a nightmare in the United States. Imagine being trapped without freedom, living in consent of fear. Harriet experienced that since she was a child, but never gave up. From a young age, Harriet experienced the cruelty of slavery, but as she grew, so did her determination to escape and help others do to the same. Her secret, a powerful faith that God will give her courage. When she was about 27, Harriet made a brave decision. She escaped from the plantation where she was enslaved and ventured north. Following the stars and trusting her intuition, on her journey, she faced dangers and slave hunters and tracking dogs, but her faith in God never wavered. Every step toward freedom was an act of faith. But Harriet did not stop after achieving her own freedom. Despite the constant risk of capturing and returning to slavery, she returned on the South several times to help other slaves escape throughout the Underground Railroad. Her secret network is safe, is of safe routes and hiding places. 
Her trust in God even grew stronger, firmly believing that God was guiding and protecting her in dangerous missions. Once, while leading a group of fugitive slaves in the middle of the night, they came across a wanted poster of her own face on it. Instead of giving up, Harriet prayed to God and pressed on, leading everyone to safety. Her faith and courage overcame fear. Harriet Tubman, known as the Moses of her people, helped more than 300 slaves free, well, free them from slave. She became a true heroine or heroine in the fight against slavery. Her story demonstrates that faith in God can help you conquer fear and accomplish extraordinary things. Today, dear young person, may you find yourself dealing with fear in your city due to insecurity, social pressure, and other challenges. However, like Harriet Tubman, faith and determination can be your allies in overcoming those fears. We want to thank our two young Pathfinders for allowing the Lord to use them to give the message for us this evening. Our young people have really been doing a good job tonight. Uh, tonight, not only just tonight, but all week, we've been blessed. Um, Pastor, I heard a comment that we've been giving our crusades a, a, a run for their money. So we want to just continue to encourage our young people as they continue to preach the gospel as they preached on tonight, fear. Yeah. That they lose the aspect of being fearful, of being afraid to be bold for God, of being afraid to be different, of being afraid to stand firm and know that God will provide for them. Even as adults, we allow this thing called fear to get us all bent out of shape. We're fearful of how we're going to pay our bills, so we go ahead and take a little bit of tithe. We're fearful of God using us to do his work, so we say we're not available. We're not capable. And we make up all these excuses for different things. But God is a God that is bigger than any other. Amen. We've seen how he's been tested in the past, and he's continued to be tested today. Amen. So we can move without fear, knowing that our God will bring us through. Yes. So during this time, we are going to go into a season of prayer. Our Pathfinders has led the charge for tonight. So I'm going to ask that we ask our Pathfinders to come forward um, and I'm going to ask a few people to pray for our Pathfinders, and then we're going to go ahead and ask our adventurers to follow suit as well. And then we're going to be praying once again for our sick and shut-in members. I know the last time I was up here, we were praying for Pastor Brian's um, mom, um, it is with sadness that I state that his mom did pass. Um, and so we want to continue to keep that family in prayer. We want to continue to keep all of our church family in prayer as well that are going through heartaches, that are going through sorrows, that are going through ups and downs. And so I'm going to ask uh, a few people to come up and pray. I'm going to ask Jada, you'll be my first prayer. I am going to ask Ella Webb to pray for us. And then I'm going to ask, is that Sister Robinson, Sister Rita? Is that you? Yes, I'm going to ask you to say a prayer for us as well. And then Jason, I'm going to ask you to say a prayer. So, and we also um, going to, I think it's tomorrow, we're going to go into our prayer box and we're going to pray for the prayers that are in our prayer box. Um, if you do have any special requests, you can go ahead and put it in our prayer box as well so that we can go ahead and pray over those tomorrow. 
So Jada, Jason, Sister Rita, and whoever, I'm gonna ask that you come forward. And also I'm gonna ask for our Pathfinder and Adventurers to just gather in the center. Sister Nemoin, if I could get you up front. We have Sister Pusey, our Pathfinder director, up. Um, oh, she's right there. I didn't even recognize you. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, OK. Um, Jason made a request that we have our parents come up as well and stand next to our Pathfinder and Adventurers. Okay, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before your presence once again, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for carrying us safely through another week. Father, as I come before you, I pray and ask that you not only keep our youth and our pathfinders and adventurers in your bosom, but may you keep all the youth across the world in your bosom as well. Continue to guide and protect them, O oh Lord. Father, I place the youth who are going I place all the youth who are also doing their global youth day. I pray and ask that you continue to be with them. Continue to give us strength, O oh Lord, and may we learn to not be fearful, but may we depend upon your word as you said that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Continue to be with us, guide and protect us. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. amen. Dear and Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for being with us and guiding us safely through another week, dear God, and protecting us from all harm and danger. Be with our pathfinders and adventurers tonight, dear God, as it's their night. Continue to bless them, bless the staff, the parents, and continue blessing the club of this church, dear God. We know how hard it is to be in this world, and it's glad. I'm happy that they're in, in club and at least in church, staying in church, staying active, and learning more about you each and every day, dear God. Continue to bless them. Continue on to bless the leadership of the pathfinder club and of the church so they can continue to grow and know more about you each and every day. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 My faith look up to thee, O Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine, righteous and loving Father and our God. want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for your, for your presence among us. want to thank you for the young people, Lord, the presenter, what they present to us, Heavenly Father. Help us, Lord Jesus, that we feed upon the, your word and let your word digest in us that we we are better people for tomorrow. So this moment, oh God, as I come to you to pray for our sick brethren, our sick loved ones, Lord Jesus. Father in heaven, Jesus, we know that you are able. And we know, Lord Jesus, that without you we cannot do nothing. So this moment, Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins, cleanse me, and wash me from all unrighteousness. And help me, oh Father heaven, that when I lift up your, your people, Lord Jesus, you hear and answer prayer. Father in heaven, you just a prayer away, Lord, and and there is no fear about that, Lord Jesus, because we know, Heavenly Father, that weary heart. Whilst we call upon your name, your promise you will be there. 
and you promise to hear us when we call. So this moment, oh God, you're still a miraculous healing God. And Father Heaven, you're a great, great, wonderful God. And you know our pain, you know our fearness, you know all about us, Lord. But you said when pain, even the Father, and Amen, rock the body. Lord, when we don't know what to do, we just stand up and look to you, the autumn finish of our faith, knowing mighty God that you're able. So this moment, Heavenly Father, lift up our sister, Sister Agnes Ramilton in your hand, Lord. We lift up Sister Gail, Sister Bell, Father in heaven, Jesus, um, Deacon Richard and our his wife, Lord, Father in heaven, so much around us, Heavenly Father, our brother, you calling the Lord, I lift them up this moment in your holy and righteous son, our shutting also, Lord Jesus, the list is going on and on and on, Lord, what have you call each and every one name, my Father in heaven, Jesus, would be so much time. So this moment, oh God, I just present the list to you, oh God, as I place it on the halter this moment, oh God, pray for your Holy Spirit, pass it over it, Lord. I pray, oh God, our Father Jesus, that you search it with your red and be light, oh God. As I search those names, mighty God, you search their body of your people. You search every hog and every system, mighty God. Wash it over them with your cleansing blood, Father in heaven. Because we know where your blood is, Father in heaven, there's healing. There's deliverance. There's peace. Oh, Father heaven, there's tranquility, Lord. There's strength. Oh, Father heaven, remember oh, oh, my sister, oh, Father heaven, that I love so much, Lord. Amen, sister. Um, Sharon Roberts, oh God, I place her in your wonderful arm this moment, oh God, as you rock her in your arm, Heavenly Father, I know, Lord, that you remove each and every pain away, Father in heaven, and know, Lord Jesus, that you're with her and you shine your light through on her own, oh God, I beg for your cleansing, oh God, I beg, Lord, for your strength, I beg for peace to those body, oh God, that you remove every pain, mighty God, you massage those veins, massage those body, Lord, remember those muscles, Heavenly Father, that ache and pain mighty God those joint in the name of Jesus I pray you put your healing hand upon it Father in heaven I just praise you and worship you for all that you have done for us knowing that we can trust you we can believe in you Lord we can rest in, in peace mighty God with you because we know Lord Jesus that you are able so we are your miraculous Lord Jesus in this place oh God and let each and every one of us know you more Lord know you and still love you Heavenly Father so this moment oh God you pass by Lord touch each and every one Lord you feel pain Lord touch every arthritis every, every, every blood pressure Lord Jesus whatever going on there be this touch it mighty God and remove those, those away oh God because Father and heaven we have to worship you Lord Jesus with a sound body and give your praise thanks and honor and know Lord Jesus Christ that we fall in us like a dove mighty God and as Paul said oh God I feel like the fire shut up in our bones so shut up in our bones mighty God that, that all Jesus each and every one of us praise your high and holy name and lift up and I know all pain all sins from amen all virus disease we flee even the Father can we are your spirit is Lord, disease cannot remain. So I give you all praise, thanks, and honor, Lord, as a touch of each and every one of our sick members, or shut in, Lord. Oh, Father, give us peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, lead us day by day, ever in thine own sweet way. Teach us to be pure and true. Show us what we are to do. Oh, Father and oh, God, we thank you for the opportunity you have given to us this week to enjoy and to give praise and glory to your name for what our youth have done this week. We thank you for leading them, for guiding them and directing them. Now, Lord, I pray for our leadership team, which is our pastor, Pastor Alfred Batiste, our head elder, and all the elders, deacon, deaconesses, ushers, and all the departments of our church. We thank you for the way you have guided us, the way you have led us. And Lord, as we now seek to enhance the program of the church, we ask that the Holy Spirit will take full control to lead and direct us the way we ought to go. Bless and keep us, Lord, as we unite. The Prince says, united we stand, but divided we will fall. So, Lord, keep us faithful, keep us obedient, 
help us to unite with this said. We two or three are gathered, he's in the midst. And now, Lord, we have a good family here, a family that is serve you, willing to listen, listen to do your will, to be service for you. So as we do service, Lord, may your name be glorified. Bless and keep each and every one here. Bless and keep those who are hearing this message. Bless and keep those who are listening. And for the in-house here, Lord, continue to light, lead and guide and direct us the way we should go. We pray the mercy we ask in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen and amen. Father, as we tarry a little longer, Lord, as we've, as we've sung the song, we'll build on the rock. We ask, Lord, that we will commit ourselves to truly build on the rock. Lord, in a world where there is fear all around, fear of heights, fear of spiders, fear of everything, Lord, we ask that as parents, Lord, we will not be fearful to raise our children in the right way. Lord, to teach them your character, to show them how you wrought in our lives, the things that you've done for us, the things that you've done for your people in the past, Lord so that they may see you working in their lives. Help us, Lord, to not be fearful about what will happen the next day and the day after. But, Lord, you hold the world within the palm of your hand, and you know all things, Lord, so help us to trust in you. Help us to know that if we instill in them the morals, the values, the traits that you have given them, Lord, that they will prosper. Lord, you haven't given us a spirit of fear, Lord, but we ask that we will be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Lord, your word says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So help them to know that if they put you first, there is nothing that they cannot do. So help them to dare to truly be like the three Hebrew boys that will stand up in the face of adversity and say, I will not bow before anybody but God. Yes. Help them to know that you have called them to a higher purpose. Help them to know that you have called them for a time like this where the world is in disarray, that they can stand and tell others that there is a God of order. There is a God who sits high and looks low. And they know their Father. Help them now today as they stand before you to make their calling and election sure. Help them not to be fearful about what their friends, or their, their associates may say about them. But help them to know that once they've made this choice, you will never let them go out of the palm of your hand. So Lord, may you give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding beyond their years. That as they make decisions, Lord, they will consult you first. They will see the need for prayer. They will see the need for supplication, Lord, and continuing in studying. And Lord, help them to see your work within their lives, within their hearts. May they feel you ever near and dear to them. Lord, that they may have their own experience with you and tell others about it. Help them to have your spirit of boldness, Lord, that they may proclaim your gospel no matter where they go. Help them to stand for truth and truth alone. Lord, we know that so many things are going on in this world. So many different false doctrines are happening. So that Satan is trying all that he can to snatch out our young people. But Lord, we ask that they will see you. That they will experience you. And Lord, they will say that it is good for them to be in the church. Not just at home watching on YouTube, Lord, but in the physical church. Help them to understand that it is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Lord, and as they go out and we go out on the streets, the highways and the byways, help them to see the importance of evangelism, of witnessing, of sharing their faith. Seeing that as they, as they learn more about you, Lord, they learn not to just become spiritually obese, but to share with one another, Lord, so that they may share the good news with others and in turn may see your word bringing light to the darkness within this world. 
So we thank you, Lord, for calling them to a place like this. Lord, we thank you for them accepting the call that you have placed on their lives because they could have been anywhere else, but they chose to be here tonight. And so we ask that your arm of protection be around them because we know that the enemy will seek to destroy. But we ask, Lord, as all of us stand within the sound of my voice, Lord, we will choose to build up our young people. We will choose to point them towards you, to encourage them along this, this straight and narrow path. Lord, because we know sometimes we as adults even buck our feet and we falter. So help us, Lord, to have patience with them as they go on their journey. As, we, as you mold us, Lord, help us to nurture them in any way, shape, or form. Whether it be a conversation, whether it be in time that we spend with them, whether it be just praying for them, Lord, help us to agonize for their soul salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you very much, brethren. Happy Sabbath to everyone. We will stand for the closing song. Four four zero. Okay. Just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your goodness. As we started this week, 
we started with the examples of Jesus when he walked here with unhurt. Yes. And tonight, if we follow your example, Lord, if we walk the way you walk, we can face our fears and tell others about the good news. So give us now, Lord, that power that we need to go out and share. As these young people lead out, Lord, help us to gain strength from them. Although they might be younger than us, but this week they show us that they too can stand for you. So help us as leaders, as parents, as aunts and uncles that we may be able to listen to our young people and in so doing we can guide them. Bless us now this week that as we go for the remaining portion of the week and your holy Sabbath, that we may live the way we ought to live. Forgive us again, we pray, through Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Good night, good night, good night.